I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Welcome back to all of our listeners from around the world and across the United States. We're happy to have you back with us again for some more incredible stories. If you are listening for the first time, welcome to the show. We hope that you enjoy it. And we also hope that you'll like and subscribe to this podcast and and join us every Friday for new episodes. Also, if you like it and you think that somebody else might enjoy some of our incredible stories, go ahead and share us on your social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, uh, whatever you go to to talk to people, go ahead, make a little mention of us and send it along to somebody else who might also enjoy our stories. Uh, now, that being said, uh, what, do, what do we have as an incredible story today? Well, Gary, uh, for the past couple months, uh, we've uh, sprinkled some, I would say they're not technically incredible stories so much as um, incredible trivia facts <laughs> oh yes yes and and people like some of these unusual uh, uh items especially when they know that they're historically accurate they're actually true but they're bizarre or they're funny or they're unique and so uh tonight we've got um you know we've got another uh, slate of uh something a little bit unusual that has happened um in American history. Now, tonight's um, podcast is going to be of special interest to all of our listeners in Canada. Really? Yes. And why is that? Because tonight is the story of a small pig who almost started a war between the United States and Canada. A pig started a war or almost started a war? Gary, I <laughs> I know that some folks are probably scratching their head and saying, are these guys real for real? Honest to goodness, anything we tell you folks, um, you know, you can you can uh you can be assured that we have done some pretty thorough research. And it is true that there was a moment in American history where a small pig almost started a war between the United States and Canada. Now, the uh, the first question that comes to mind is, how could that possibly be? Yeah. I mean, was the pig making threats at people? I mean, was it a talking pig? Was it an American pig or a Canadian pig? Was it Wilbur from Charlotte's Web? I don't know. He doesn't seem like he would be the kind to start a war. No, no, no. Well, this little known event, which maybe our listeners are learning about for the very first time, occurred in 1859 now put your thinking cap on 1859 that's a year before abraham lincoln was elected the 16th president of the united states and shortly before the civil war broke out correct so the civil war of course overwhelmed all of the minor news events of the era but this was definitely one of the minor news events of the era in 1859 when James Buchanan's presidency was finishing up. Now, it all started on a small island called San Juan, located in Friday Harbor, and this is just off the coast of what is the present state of Washington in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Uh, not the city of Washington, D.C. but Washington is, State. Yes, the state of Washington in the Pacific Northwest uh, which, you know, um, borders Canada, as you know. Okay. So uh, this is a small island off of the mainland. San Juan Island. Yes. Now, the trouble began when a pig belonging to the Hudson Bay Company rooted in a potato patch on the island owned by Lyman Cutler. Mr. Cutler was a farmer. Okay. And Mr. Cutler uh, did not have any kind of sense of humor when it came to seeing pigs rooting up his garden. Mm. Uh, no, no, he had, uh, you know, he had no patience for that whatsoever. So he took out his gun and he shot the pig. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. And so, believe it or not, the folks in England 
were enraged. They claimed that the pig belonged to the British Empire, Hudson Bay Company. Now, hold on. So is Canada part of the British Empire? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hudson Bay Company is part of the British Empire, and so the pig belonged to the Hudson Bay Company. Farmer Cutler shot it. And so, oh, boy, that's destroying uh, property that, you know, was not American. And so the English, believe it or not, uh, lodged a formal diplomatic protest to Washington. Really? About, about this shot pig. A formal diplomatic process. <laughs> I, I think it got a little blown out of proportion, don't a you? A little bit. <laughs> and so anyways, um, the, the situation became so tense. Listen to this. The United States felt the need to dispatch 400 American soldiers and 15 cannons to this small island. Wow. Whoa, 400 American soldiers, 15 cannons, headed for the island of San Juan off the coast of the state of Washington. Well, the English government countered by sending 2,140 British soldiers. 2,000. Ooh. 167 guns and five warships. Over a pig. Over a pig. And so there they were, lined up against each other, the small forces of the United States of America and some overwhelming forces of the British Empire, thousands of soldiers, hundreds of cannon, and five warships. This was as close to war as two countries could possibly get over Farmer Cutler shooting a pig that was rooting up his garden. Now, how did this resolve itself, Gary? Because obviously the history books show that the United States and Canada or the British Empire did not go to war with each other over a pig. Clearly. So uh, fortunately, the folks that were on the ground there used calm and uh, kept a cool head. And eventually, uh, uh, no shots were fired, of course, um, Eventually, uh, this incident, which was called the Pig War at the time, the only casualty was the, the pig. Poor pig. Yeah, he was the only casualty of the Pig War. The British finally left the island, too expensive for all those troops and warships, of course, to be stationed there indefinitely. And uh, the island has been a part of the United States ever since then, and the war just faded away. And, of course, a year or two later, when the Civil War broke out, Nobody paid this incident any attention whatsoever. But there it was. We found it located in the dust dustbins of uh, history and are bringing it to the attention of our listeners, perhaps for the very first time tonight. Oh, my gosh. You know what it reminds me of? You've seen the movie Canadian Bacon with John Candy. Yes. There it is. I, I have to wonder if that movie wasn't inspired <laughs> by this I wonder if those event. screenwriters knew about uh, the pig war. I mu must have, must have. So that's how a small pig almost started a war between the United States and Canada. But wait, wait, Gary. We have another wild, unusual story from the dustbins of history. You ready? Do tell. I'm going to tell you about, uh, uh, well, I told you about Robert Fulton. That was kind of odd. Uh, and then um, I'm going to tell you about Henry Wisner. Uh, who was he? I don't know. <laughs> who was Henry Wisner? Okay, Henry Wisner. Let's go back to the 1700s. He was born around 1720 in New York. He was a resident of Orange County, New York. And he uh, built and operated a grist mill in Goshen. And he became one of the town's leading citizens. Oh. So he was a grist mill operator. Now, why is he incredible? Well... Uh, when New York created a revolutionary government in 1775, and that was the year Dr. William Kitchener was born, mm -hmm. uh, Wisner was sent to the New York Provincial Congress, and that body in turn named him as a delegate to both the First and the Second Continental Congresses. And he served there through 1776, which was a momentous year in American history. Oh, wow. He was there on the 4th of July, 1776, Gary, and he was one of the people who voted for independence. Really? Yes. 
Henry Wisner. Uh, now, Thomas McKean was the other delegate from New York. He was also there on July 4, 1776. He also voted for independence. <clears throat> and when the folks back home in New York authorized them to support the Declaration, uh, the actual signing ceremony took place in August of 1776. So our uh, Declaration of Independence was not signed until August, even though it's dated July 4th, 1776. And guess who forgot to come? Wisner. Henry Wisner either forgot or was unable for some reason to come. So guess what? This poor guy, you know, was on the cusp of becoming very famous in American history. He voted for the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, and then he forgot to sign it a couple months later, a month later. Oh. <laughs> or, like I say, he got uh, involved with something where he wasn't able to get back to sign it. So poor Henry Wisner is not one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, even though he voted for it on July 4th, mm -hmm. 1776. Now, not to sell this man short, um, when he learned that one of the Continental Army's difficulties was obtaining powder and shot, when he returned home, he built three gunpowder mills, Gary. And at one point, he was shipping 1,000 pounds of gunpowder uh, gun each week to George Washington's army. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he later financed the erection of cannon and defensive works overlooking the Hudson River, and that blocked the British ability to use the river in the Highlands region. And then he also, in 1788, was able to be one of the people uh, to ratify the U.S. Constitution, but uh, he chose not to. He, f he feared that uh, the strong central government would eventually infringe on state and individual rights. So once again, he blew off an opportunity to become super famous in American history. Wisner, he just kept dropping the ball when it came to being famous. <laughs> That's uh, certainly one of the oddities in American history, isn't it? That it is. That and it is. he may have been busy uh, supplying a uh, thousand pounds of gunpowder, and that would be a legitimate reason for not being there in Philadelphia to uh, for the actual signing in August of 1776. I just see them sitting in that hall yeah. saying, "Anybody seen Wisner? So Wisner? The, anybody see Wisner? So for the young people, yeah, <laughs> where was he? Did he forget? Like Ferris Bueller." Wisner. <laughs> Wisner. <laughs> so, for the young people who believe American history is boring, I think tonight we've put that to the lie, and you can find some incredible information if you dig for it. Yeah. A lot of different stuff. Well, I, I will just a, say a, this. A, a uh, pig starting uh, a war <laughs> and a poor guy named Wisner. Yeah, who forgot to sign the Declaration of Independence that he voted for. I know. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, Still figure. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow, you know what this proves? This proves to me that history is a fascinating subject, and it's well worth uh, everybody's study. Uh, who was it? Schopenhauer said that those who uh, forget their history are condemned to relive it. And so I, I, think, I think it's uh, worthwhile for everybody to study their history, to know it as best they can. And in doing so, they are going to come across some of these incredible incidents and facts just as we have. That's true. That's true. You know, I, I, I've always thought that, uh, you know, we have the main facts that we focus on uh, in history that are important. But some of these little side things, I think, are what really make it interesting. If, if we didn't have these little side notes in history, um, yeah, I think it would just get to be Oh, yeah. Dull. If you just study history because of, and, and memorize yeah. dates and battles, mm -hmm. oh, boring. Boring. You know, it's funny. I... When I was growing up in New Mexico as a kid, I remember from the fourth grade in our New Mexico history books, they had one weird fact about one of the governors of New Mexico. It quite literally said in the textbook that the one of the governors, and I, I want to say it was sometime in the 1800s, uh, had gotten drunk, and fallen into a vat of sheep dip, which is sheep manure, and had drowned to death. <laughs> what a way to go. What a way to go. It, and it's funny because I don't remember a whole lot else about New Mexico history, mm -hmm. but that one weird fact yeah, that was remember. in the textbook. You remember that one? I do remember that one. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, history is a fascinating subject. It's important uh, for us as uh, people and intelligent uh, people to make wise uh, decisions in our daily life and for the future uh, to know, know history and to benefit from the lessons that history has uh, provided us throughout the, uh, the ages. And in yes. the process, you get rewarded with some of these things that uh, you, you won't fall asleep because they're incredibly yes. unusual and interesting. Yes, uh, so I have learned today, uh, if I have a pig, uh, I will not let it root around in somebody <laughs> else's field, especially if they're in another country. Uh, I will not be uh, drinking while I'm around sheep manure. Mm -hmm. And if uh, somebody asks me to sign an important document, I will make sure to be there on time. Yeah, I, th I think that's a I think that's great uh, philosophy. I, that's that's how I live my life. <laughs> All right, uh, but for now, oh, I'm Richard. I'm Gary, and those are some incredible stories. Uh, like I said before, like and subscribe to our show on any platform you listen to your podcast, and please share us on show, uh, social media with anybody you think might like some incredible stories. <laughs>